You're listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation. Old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now, your hosts, Shane and Jason. The Ultimate Vanu Beginner's Guide for Gores and Beyond. Show notes and the full article can be found at vanupodcast.com forward slash 109. The past year has brought many new folks into the realm of self-liberation, and since Vanu is still technically considered in its revival stages, I figured I'd put together the short Vanu Beginner's Guide to jumpstart your journey uh, into your liberated lifestyle of choice. Uh, for more references, information, or content, uh, follow the links within the article, or just head over to the podcast archives. Uh, that is the best place to start after all. To an early initiated freedom seeker, it could appear that there are endless problems and grievances in the modern world and few solutions, especially after the past 300 or so days. And in the nonsensical, coercion-ruled survival society, the touted solutions always, <laughs> strangely, seem to be far worse than the problems they are alleged attempts to solve. Uh, whether it's a fake overblown virus, whatever your position or the whole truth may be, there's plenty of evidence for both. Uh, the hyperinflation ensuing manufactured collapse from adding trillions upon trillions of fake dollars to the fake debt for stimulus, or even just good old non-conspiratorial blowback from destroying lives and families overseas, and again, a largely constructed yet deadly dangerous game of mass murder, more commonly known as foreign policy. Clearly, while this somewhat defeatist position is understandable, it's not an accurate representation of reality. Believe it or not, you have a lot more power and control than you may realize. And there are a number of strategies and methodologies available that could be of assistance in your pursuit of self-liberation. Yes, some sacrifices and convenience and other things will probably have to be made. It may not always be easy, and in fact, it may be extremely difficult at times. But with this introductory guide at hand, your pursuit of Vanu, or freedom more generally, will be made much easier. In this Vanu Beginner's Guide, I will define necessary terms and introduce you to various lifestyle changes in pursuit of Vanu, provide you with an introduction to the founder and main proponent of this freedom strategy, tell you why Vanu matters. Then I'll cover Rayo's concept of ethical enclave trading, which actually predates agorism, uh, FAQ, or otherwise known as a common confusions list, and next steps and pointers on where to learn more. In other words, to quote Rayo, now that a collective movementism, also called bullshit libertarianism and political crusading, has been discredited as a liberation strategy, it is appropriate to re-examine strategies which treat freedom as an individually achievable way of life and marketable commodity. Onward to solutions. Your liberated lifestyle is closer than you think. Defining our terms. A couple of the most critical words to define in this realm are self-liberation and vanu. Firstly, self-liberation is the constant action of shedding that which enslaves and restricts while simultaneously building and creating an environment in which freedom can thrive. Self-liberation deals with all realms of the human experience, whether mental, physical, or spiritual. A self-liberator, then, is the forward-thinking individual, the creative generative force which brings areas of autonomy and liberation into fruition. In our anarchist agorist circles, these areas of autonomy are colloquially, colloquially known as temporary autonomous zones, second realms, ethical enclaves, agoras, etc. Bonu is the condition or quality of, as well as the action of achieving, an invulnerability to coercion. Etymologically, it is an awkward contraction of the phrase voluntary, not vulnerable, hence Vanu, and practically, it's the adoption of lifestyle changes and pursuance of said invulnerability to coercion. These include, but are not limited to, ethical enclave trading, the precursor to agorism, more below, off-grid homesteading, van nomadism, crypto-anarchy, which includes things like cryptocurrencies, encryption, mesh networking, etc., perpetual traveling and strategic relocation, entrepreneurship and financially independent early retirement, Wilderness Vanu, Vanu in Cities, and more. Grammatical variations of Vanu defined. Vanu, the condition or quality of, as well as the action of achieving, an invulnerability to coercion. Vanuer, having comparatively more an invulnerability to coercion. Vanuence, in the process of achieving an invulnerability to coercion. Vanuin, one who has an invulnerability to coercion. Vanuist, one who advocates for an invulnerability to coercion. Venu uh, vanuism, the advocacy of an invulnerability to coercion. Venuum, the place or situation of an invulnerability to coercion. Venumi, the art of achieving an invulnerability to coercion. And venumer, one skilled at an invulnerability to coercion. El Rayo, the first venuin. 
Back in the 1960s, a man named Tom Marshall, Rayo, resided in Southern California, then a bustling libertarian community. He was a techie engineer, a socially awkward fellow, a marijuana smoker, not much of a philosopher, but a freedom-seeking libertarian nonetheless. Early on, he spent some time at the Nathaniel Brandon Institute, a school teaching the objectivist philosophy laid out by Ayn Rand until his first major venture came about, the Free Isles Project. The Free Isles Project spawned out of the preform inform zine. The goal was to conduct research on the efficacy of setting up a new libertarian nation and the seemingly endless possibilities of freedom, if it were to come into fruition. Rayo said, quote, The Free Isle resident would hypothetically have all of the advantages of participating in world commerce while being free from taxes and regulations. Furthermore, a free isle, if it were successful, could be a very effective demonstration of the merits of laissez-faire capitalism. End quote. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it was never successful. Hell, it never got past the talking stage. Eventually, the movement subsided after disagreements arose regarding the size and scope of government, the lack of individuals willing to become involved, and the potential ramifications from existing nation-states. As an aside, the latter two are still big problems for libertarian country-building projects today, uh, thankfully, most of the newer projects are more anarchistic, but the facilitators are often terrible strategists and tacticians. Uh, generally, they fail to learn from history. Rayo, frustrated with the all-talk, no-action libertarians of his day, said screw it, and moved out of his apartment into a camper mounted on his pickup truck. He became a van nomad and began laying the foundation for this liberating freedom strategy. He pursued van nomadism for some time until he realized that it didn't create the freedom he desired. So he and his free mate agreed upon a wilderness fauna for their new lifestyle. Uh, they pitched a tent, literally, in the Siskiyou region, northern California and southern Oregon for most of the year, and only returned to the state of surveillance society, the first realm, controlled economy, when they needed to re-up on supplies or to meet up with readers or Vani Week participants. They also spent some time in the Bella Coola region of British Columbia. They also contributed to and published many libertarian publications, such as Libertarian Connection, Vanu Life, Preform Inform, Going Mobile, Innovator, and many more for some time, until Rayo's infamous disappearance in the year of 1974. No one has heard from him since, but the prospects for Vanu uh, live on. Why Vanu Matters In the 1960s, Rayo was not only pointing out the dangers of the state, but emphasized the looming threat of megacorporations, the technocracy, and private coercion, that is, private violators of personal property, like thieves and rapists. Many of the revelations he came to are not shared or really acknowledged by most folks even today, and not only was he forward-thinking enough to come to such conclusions, uh, but he took action and direct responsibility for his freedom uh, by becoming a very early Van Nomad. But it's important to keep in mind that Vani was truly yours for the making, as everyone's path to liberation is wholly unique, and the strategy will necessarily evolve over time. The threats and coercion faced today are at least a little different than in the 1950s, and likely even more distinct when compared to the 1800s. So it's a very dynamic, flexible, and adaptable freedom strategy. And as Rayo pointed out, even in a post-government society, money will still be necessary, as a post-coercion world is seemingly a utopian fantasy. The final reason I'll mention as to Vanu's importance today is that it's a very objective approach to freedom, unlike many others. If the lifestyle change you adopt makes you more invulnerable to coercion, then it's in line with Vanu. And Rayo even came up with a metric for measuring it called mean time to harassment. The idea is the longer in between interactions with coercers, for example, bludgies or police, a contact tracer nowadays, and pharmaceutical rep representative maybe, um, etc., the higher the mean time to harassment. Check out the chart below uh, in the original article at vonniepodcast.com forward slash 109 for a visual rep representation of the concept, um, or go to the relevant episode of the Vonnie podcast where we covered it more in depth, which is linked in the original article. Ethical Enclave Trading, the Precursor to Agorism. In November 1965, when Samuel Edward Conkin III, SCK-3, would have been 18 years old, Rio published an article on Innovator titled Self-Seeking Ethical Enclave, Black Marcus. He defined this concept as, quote, voluntary transactions between individuals who are living under a collectivist government when such transactions are conducted independent of that government. Ethical denotes the distinguishing characteristic of participating individuals and adherence to the ethical principle of voluntarism, and enclave denotes physical immersion within a philosophically alien society, end quote. He makes an even further distinction between black and gray, uh, black one and gray two, uh, gray two markets. Quote, an ethical enclave by existing within the territorial domain of a coercive government is either legal, utilizing interstices too, and the taxes and regulations of that government, or illegal, operating despite threats of violence, one. Sounds awfully similar to agorism, huh? Well, it is, and there are only a couple of really minor differences between them. 
First off, ethical enclave trading is merely an option for venuance, one strategy of many in the tool belt. Uh, whereas if you don't practice black and gray market trading, uh, well, you aren't an agorist. Put another way, in a state of society, everyone is a counter-economist, but not everyone is an agorist. The necessary duality of philosophy and practice being shared by both of these liberation visionaries. Secondly, in the agorist game plan laid out by Konkin, the goal was starve the state, then smash it. Uh, it's more of an offensive strategy. On the other hand, as Rayo explained, Venuans understand that as long as a culture that encourages the growth of the servile society exists, the state will exist. So it's a way of learning methods of coexisting with the coercers in the here and now, or as the tagline in Vanu Life read, quote, how to live and let live out of sight and mind of those unwilling to let live by people who are doing it. Konkin even mentioned Rayo and Vanu in at least a handful of publications, which can be found here. So Konkin was familiar. Could he have drawn inspiration from Rayo's concept of ethical enclaves? It's certainly possible. Frequently asked questions, or common confusions. Does Vanu support electoral campaigns? Answer, no, because such activity is considered to be political crusading, which is the vernacular term for reformism. That is, working inside of the system in order to change it from within. Anyone who truly understands the anatomy of the state knows it is doomed to fail before you even begin. Further, privacy and security culture are critical to Vanu, both of which are not to be found within these privacy-unfriendly systems. Question, where can I go to join the Vanu movement? Answer, as a matter of principle, Vanu is against collective movementism, and as such, cannot be classified as a social movement of any kind. Cultural bowel movements are designed to fail, simply because as critical mass becomes closer to being achieved, the integrity of any movement's ideological principles are diluted into nothingness. Let's just say the winds of political expediency are bent by gurus and leaders, who seek to exercise power over others by selling out their own followers for the sake of merging with the power establishment in order to accomplish their new goals. All you need to do to prove the existence of disingenuous activists is to study history. Rather, the main driving idea behind Vanu is individual Vanu home bases and a common agora or ethical enclave. A best of both worlds, I guess you could say. Rayo even went as far as recommending uh, keeping Vanu home base location uh, withheld from traders and associates. Uh, but that doesn't work very well for, say, an off-grid, uh, you know, off-grid intentional community projects. Calculated risks, according to the meantime to harassment. Question, aren't you guys uh, Venuans and Venuists just preppers and survivalists? Uh, answer, no. Because although we do use many of the same methods, food and water storage, bug out bags, firearms, batteries, strategic relocation, etc., our motivations and perspectives are vastly dissimilar. Unfortunately, retreaters of all kinds are usually driven by a sense of impending catastrophe, hence the emergence of doom porn. As self-liberators, we are more concerned about living freedom in the here and now, regardless of whether predicted doomsdays happen to occur or not. Question, why are Venuans unsupportive of both limited government advocates, minarchists, and proprietarian anarchists and caps, anarcho-capitalists? Answer, minarchists and ancaps believe in utopias plain and simple. Whether it be a constitutional government or a stateless society, both place their faith in the fallacious notion of a cultural revolution. Again, this is repackaged collective movementism and is hardly worth any lengthy explanation, except to say that Vanu places no faith in such things, preferring instead to get with ourselves and each other in order to build our Venuums and Vanuist mini-cultures, because that's what's actually achievable and realistic not only within, one, within one's lifetime, but also for the foreseeable future. Put another way, generally speaking, anarcho-capitalism is theoretical, Vanu is a combination of both theory and practice, with a heavy emphasis on the latter. Question, are Vanu shelters a temporary or permanent autonomous zone? Answer, depending on the type of shelter, a Venuum could be either. The mean time to harassment is a Venuum spectrum ranging from a TAS, temporary autonomous zone, summer survival, um, all-weather survival, comfortable home, and small workshop or laboratory, to a PAS, permanent autonomous zone, things like small manufacturing, light industry, and heavy industry. I refer to the MTH chart above in the original article. Question, is there any difference between Venuums, the second realm, and the Agora? Answer, not much, uh, although each term highlights different features. A venuum is the place or situation of an invulnerability to coercion. The second realm is a culture of liberty that occupies its own protected space and implements independent systems of cooperation. And the agora is an open marketplace, presumably an unlicensed, unregulated, untaxed, laissez-faire freed market. Arguably, the second realm is the combination of the agora with venuums, usually in the form of a TAS. As passes, ethical enclaves can be made to facilitate trade while maintaining excellent security culture, whether it be in the form of an intentional community or even a free port. In libertarian fiction, examples of these include Aurora from Alongside Night, Cannoneer's Farm from Hashtag Agora, and the town of Hardyville from Claire Wolf's Hardyville series. 
Question. Isn't the Vanu term servile society derisive, not unlike calling someone a sheeple? Answer. Look, it, it probably is. But personally speaking, I use servile society more so as a matter-of-fact shorthand descriptor. I can't deny or ignore what I see, servility, when I have to trudge on into the grocery store or local farm supply shop. To do so would be to deny reality, which is just plain unwise. That said, I definitely don't encourage or promote division. The more peaceful and non-coercive free souls we have in our ethical enclaves, or agoras, the better. We're all at places of unawareness and ignorance at some point, and you never know who will be the next one receptive to your or our message, however you want to look at it. But until individuals forswear the use of coercion, they are not permitted in our free zones, lest the free zones cease to exist. Question. Why did Rayo create Vanu when liberty, freedom, libertarian, anarcho-capitalism, etc. existed at the time? Answer. Briefly put, things like liberty and freedom mean different things to different people. If you ask a far leftist what freedom is, they might say a universal basic income. If you ask a conservative, they'll likely posit things like 2A or lower extortion, taxes. Clearly, neither of these positions are anywhere close to those who have made it this far in this Vanu Beginner's Guide. Merely changing out the spoiler on the shitbox of slavery and servitude. See above for explanation on anarcho-capitalism, and the term libertarian was bastardized in 1971 when David Nolan politicized it and formed the LP. Also, these widely popularized terms are far more prone to verbicide and carry a lot more negative baggage. So Vanu, then, is an attempt at making a pursuit of freedom more objective. Instead of liberty, a general exemption from coercion, or freedom, an absence of coercion, Vanu is an invulnerability to coercion. Question. The concept of security culture is closely intertwined with Vanu. What is it? Answer. Security culture is the direct application of the right to privacy. As a strategy to maintain liberty, it is focused on the how of making privacy happen in the real world, given that the philosophical justification for privacy is self-evident, particularly through argumentation ethics. Next steps. Subscribe to the Vani podcast via RSS on your favorite podcatcher, which if you're listening to this, you probably already did that. Um, that way you can keep up with the newest developments in the exciting realms of Vani and self-liberation. Uh, next, check out uh, the page on the VaniPodcast.com website for free Vani books. Uh, includes the PDF and audio book for Vani Book 1 and Vani Book 2, as well as many other free books and zines for download. I will certainly give you a good foundation um, for your, uh, you know, your beginning or if, uh, you know, even if you're a, an intermediate when it comes to self-liberation. Lots of good stuff in there. Um, next, know thyself. Figure, figure out where you are at in your pursuit of Vanu or uh, your untangling from Babylon. Uh, questions to ask, how many ties and connections to the state survival society do I have? What are the easiest, most painless ones to get rid of? Uh, Etc. And uh, yeah, start doing it. Check out the following resources for inspiration, knowledge, and networking. Freedomcells.org for connecting with like-minded folks locally. IC.org, an intentional community directory. There's some, some really, uh, I guess there's some hidden gold mines in there, which we will uh, draw attention to at some point um, in, our, in our security culture-minded map for, uh, for Pasnia, which is the next one, Pasnia.com, a potential model for a self-sufficient second realm network. Uh, Agoras.market, a network of Agoras businesses, hustles, etc., uh, agorasnexus.com I don't know why I did that anyway agorasnexus directory networking um, podcast articles and more and uh, lastly building the second realm Bonnie podcast uh, Bonnie podcast.com forward slash second realm clips um, where you can find the episode series listing and uh, all of the necessary links the finishing touches and there you have it the philosophy history and an overall introduction to the liberating freedom strategy of Vanu. After you determine where you're at in your journey, identify what's important to you, what lifestyles you know or believe you would enjoy and could achieve, and start taking steps towards a life of independence from coercive influences in both the public and private spheres. This guide will indeed assist you on your path, but always keep in mind, Vani was yours for the making. You just heard the Ultimate Vani Beginner's Guide for Agoras and Beyond, uh, originally published at agorasnexus.com and uh, obviously mirrored here at uh, vonniepodcast.com forward slash 109 where you can uh, find the full article, all of uh, you know, all of the uh, embedded links, uh, which there are many, and uh, yeah, anything else you want to find. Lots of, uh, lots of good stuff in the show notes. Uh, and with that uh, said, if you uh, want to learn more about uh, the Celebrating Freedom Strategy of Vanu, um, we do have the Vanu bundle uh, available now. It was just recently updated um, as a few days ago. Includes uh, six books on uh, Vanu and self liberation. Vanu, the strategy for self liberation. My book, um, Vanu, the search personal freedom, which is book one. Um, Rayo's book and Vanu book two. Um, the life of Tom Marshall, which is a uh, uh, which was a publication put together by Jim Stum, um, which uh, kind of chronicled you know what we know about uh, about Rayo uh, slash Tom Marshall. 
Vonnie Life March 1973 is another one, a really, really uh, incredible, incredible uh, guide to have uh, on hand. And uh, lastly, a Vonnie Guide to Firearms by Josiah Warren. Uh, and I wrote a forward for it, I think, and, and uh, chapter as well. So, um, yeah, you can find that at, Von- uh, at uh, libertyandertack.com forward slash Vonnie Bundle uh, if you'd like to uh, to check that out. Um, with that said, I've got a bunch of uh, bunch of stuff in uh, a uh, bunch of stuff prepped um, for release uh, next. Uh, next, you guys will hear a discussion I had with Max Hillebrand, a uh, um, you know our, our, our uh, friend of uh, anyone van nomad over in Europe. Uh, does a lot of work, uh, you know, in the cypherpunk crypto anarchy sphere, and uh, I guess bringing awareness of uh, Vonnie over there. So I uh, certainly appreciate that. You'll enjoy that conversation. And uh, beyond that, um, guest appearances galore. Um, I've got. Um, I was on uh, Chris Jansen's End Evil podcast, uh, which is on the the One Great Work Network, Mark Passio's new network. Um, that one will be out at uh, at some point, uh, whenever he gets that out. And uh, then um, there's also um, I was a uh, big one. <laughs> I was on a Sal Sal, uh, Sal, uh, Sal Mayweather's podcast, uh, The Agora, as a guest with Derek Bro. So that one will be out as well um, at uh, some point over the, over the course of the next uh, you know days or a uh, week. Um, and I think there might even be another one coming up next week too. So um, I will uh, obviously mirror all those here, and uh, you're going to hear some, I guess, some interesting, interesting stuff discussed um, that we haven't. Uh, I guess we've covered a little bit here on the podcast. Uh, I guess we have. So I guess it's not, not necessarily new, but uh, some good conversations uh, for sure. Um, I think that's all I have for you guys. VaniaPodcast dot com forward slash one nine again for the uh, full article and uh, all that good stuff. Um, I will uh, leave it there. Uh, see you guys. Thanks. Carl Watner, longtime proponent of a voluntary society, died last December. You may have seen his articles published on his website, voluntarius.com, in his newsletter, The Voluntarist, The Mises Institute, or elsewhere over the last 40 years. His newest book, I Must Speak Out, Volume 2, The Best of the Voluntarist, is now available via Liberty Under Attack Publications. This 430-page second volume spans the years of 2000 through 2020 and includes articles by Carl Watner, Hans Hermann Hoppe, Carl Hess, Benjamin Tucker, George H. Smith, Lysander Spooner, Pete Ayer, Joyce Brand, and many others. I Must Speak Out is for the newly initiated, the veteran voluntarist, or anywhere in between. Buy the book now at libertyunderattack.com slash voluntarist. For more great content on building a voluntary society and for Carl's extensive archives, check out voluntarist.com.